Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I got something a little interesting for you here today, and that's reactions, or react streamers. What are reacts, you ask? Well, you ever have a friend show you this really funny video that you just have to see because, oh my god, it's so funny, and as you're watching it, you look over to your left, and they're making this face. Welcome to the premiere of a new series that I'm calling Overthinking. And in this one, we'll really hyper-analyze this format of entertainment, make some observations with some actual data to back them up. We'll study the effect of reacts within the wonderful, vomitous world of social media, and even learn a bit about its interesting history. But do you know what's even more interesting than that? Surfshark VPN. I've done a total of one sponsor, for the 10 years I've been on YouTube, and I mainly stick with what I actually use, and VPNs are one of them. And what this is, is a virtual private network app and browser extension that puts you anywhere in the world. Although you may be living in the comfort of your mom's basement, as far as everyone else is concerned, you're living in some other basement halfway across the globe. I've personally used it to get past Steam's stupid region release dates. For example, all of the Aussies out there typically know that they get releases about 12 hours early. But with Surfshark, you can put another shrimp on the bobby, mate, and have a grand old time. Good eye. But beyond that, it also keeps your privacy and data secure through its encryption technology in case you're watching some embarrassing content. And I also use it to get around content blocks with things like Netflix, which actually block movies and TV shows depending on what country you're in. So, something that I actively use personally and recommend. If you scan this QR code or click the link and use my promo code, you can get an extra three months for free because I'm so special and important. And if it doesn't work out, they also have a 30-day money-back guarantee if you find yourself unsatisfied. And if you want more information, you can find a link at the top of the description. But do you know what you'll also find in this video? Angry people on the internet. And to first understand why everyone is so angry, we have to understand our history. And to do that, we have to rewind all the way back to when we were a little younger and a little more lean. A time before our hair migrated away from our heads and towards our loins. That's right the early days of YouTube in 2005. So the true origins of the React form of entertainment can actually be traced back to a little show known as Mystery Science Theater 3000. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to start at the dawn of YouTube. Both the site and its user base has changed quite a lot throughout the years and one of the many now-defunct features were responses. Aptly named, this feature allowed users to respond to the video, and when this button was pressed, they would be prompted to upload a video of their own, which would then appear directly under the video in question, and their format ranged. In many cases, in the early campy days of the website, it would just be a one-shot recording, but rarely, and more commonly as time passed, the formatting improved, and these users actually started including the original video in their responses in order to address each point in a more orderly fashion, instead of just arduously droning on in a monotone manner about nothing for 20 minutes. Oh, wait a second. Regardless, this is when <laughs> Pandora's box was opened. The birth of the professional video watcher. So, you may be asking yourself, okay, so why was it removed? Well, for the same reasons that it's the center of discussion today. It was incredibly fucking controversial. It's about poning me? Not gonna happen. You know why? I poned your mom's ass the other night and heard her scream my name. Demonious, demonious, demonious. So, it caused a ton of controversy until YouTube basically pulled the mom power move and said, Okay, you little brats. You can't behave? Well, no one gets toys then. 
Christmas is canceled. But all was not lost, and luckily, there were those willing to continue the fight. Rebels who said, we're not going to take it. We're going to record ourselves watching videos for other people to watch, whether you like it or not. And it stuck. The community surrounding it remained pretty niche at first, but much like a virus, it would slowly evolve and spread and grow in power until 2016, until, like, a couple of villains straight out of Dragon Ball Z, this pair comes in to stir the pot. Some of you may remember the Fine Brothers. They ran a network of channels dedicated entirely to the then-growing React genre, and they were rather popular, and for some reason, because of that, they had got it into their heads that they therefore owned copyright on it. So, because they're so gracious, they released an announcement that they were trademarking the term React and very generously allowing other people to use their completely unique format that they created themselves. As long as they join their network and give up a percentage of their revenue. Part of why we believe this initiative is important is due to witnessing many creators, ourselves included, having their shows and formats blatantly stolen by companies and people, both online and on television. And we implore everyone not to support those companies and channels. When you notice someone ripping someone's format off, don't stand for it. It didn't work. The entire debacle was a complete clown show, but it was also important in the history of the format because it would give it even more attention. People who hadn't even heard of Reacts before this point had either started watching them or even making them themselves. And as streaming had started gaining newfound levels of popularity in the 2010s, the format blew up to a point to where it spawned its own subgenre of entertainment. Complaining about React. Hundreds of thousands of protesters back on the streets today, clashing with riot police, tear gas now, uh, breaking up one large crowd. So, there are two factions to consider here pro Reacts and anti Reacts, and a hidden third faction who don't really care because they actually value their time. And in the effort of constructiveness, I want to start with the good here. First off, is that it's just a genuine form of entertainment. There's absolutely no question. You can dislike it, that's completely fine, but that doesn't erase the millions and millions of views that this format rakes in daily. And legally speaking, we do actually have a precedent set with the lawsuit between H3H3 and the Matt Haas Zone, where a court ruled that a React video was fair use. But Beyond that, it kind of gets into that discussion of personal taste, like reality TV and Jersey Shore and keeping up with the Kardashians. Personally, watching it makes me want to vomit, but they won't go away. Clearly, there are those who do indeed wish to keep up with the Kardashians, reinforcing that my opinion is indeed just that, an opinion, and is therefore a legitimate form of entertainment. Ugh. Sorry, I just almost threw up there. But aside from that, there's also a positive in the sense of exposure. There is an element of discoverability. If someone reacts to a video, a certain portion of that audience will think to themselves, mm, that was pretty good, and I'd like to see more from this person, and introducing that channel to a pair of eyeballs that otherwise may never have found them at all. I'm going to draw a little graph on how social media works. Basically, we have the tops and we have the bottoms. First, you have the top 0.1%, the funniest streamer, the most interesting YouTube channel, or the person with the best filter on Instagram, whatever. Comprising the next 1% are the mids 
and the remaining are the people who never get above 10 viewers on Twitch, they never get above 100 subscribers on YouTube. For every person above 100 viewers, there are like a thousand more with two, one of them being themselves, and the other one being their mom, who's being supportive, but honestly probably got bored and just has them in another tab while they watch a Mad Season Show video. I like to call this area the bottom, and it's where 99% of channels go to die. Um, you will never know how demotivating it is to spend a week on a video. It gets 12 views and one comment from some guy calling you a monotone fuck. Uh, <laughs> I know, I've done it. I did that for about a year until some guy named Old Bess gave me that sweet, sweet exposure. This wasn't a react, but he linked one of my videos to his, and with him being a much bigger channel, that got the ball rolling to where I actually started to get some traction and resulting motivation, and here I am. I am convinced I would not be talking to you right now had it not been for this guy. It may seem harsh, but that's just how it is with the social media websites. They do a poor job of promoting small channels because it's not lucrative to promote small channels. I take a risk and give this spot to an unproven beginner when you can have someone who has proven to be capable of holding an audience and has been doing it professionally for years. And it sucks because there absolutely are small channels out there that blow the big timers out of the water. They have the skill, they have the passion, the time, the format, personality, whatever, but they never get a shot because it's not lucrative for these social media websites to give them a shot. There are people who make the very poor decision to drop everything, try to go full-time, they drop school, their job, they go 12 hours a day, and one year later, their mom opened up two tabs because she started to feel bad. And, and after three years, and after three years of streaming full-time, I had a lot of good times, but at the end of the day, bro, it's, it's like, you, you, some people just don't make it bro some people just don't make it some people just don't just don't get there man you know and, and no matter what you do you always stay at the bottom you know I, I've, I've asked my friends I, I've asked them this I, I apologize for getting don't get me wrong I'm not supporting douchebags who try to get free shit by paying with exposure but absolutely like them or dislike them they are a way for these channels to get their foot into the door and realizing their dreams of finally becoming a top. But, of course, there's more to it than that. Um, much like anything with life, only Sith steal in absolutes, and just as how a React streamer may promote growth through exposure, they can also harm it through competition, and while exposure can be incredibly valuable to a small channel, it starts to wane the more popular that channel is to the point to where it actually becomes detrimental. And this is where we're going to get into some first-hand data here. I will be using a specific person as an example here, and I'm using this guy because I don't think he'd take this as me calling him out or anything. Um, hopefully not at least, but the example we're going to be using today is the first video of my critically acclaimed series, Pandora's Box. Episode 4 is out now, by the way. And the reactor is some guy who, I don't know, he got like corporal in classic World of Warcraft. I'm not really sure, those low ranks get kinda hard to see when you're all the way up at uh, rank 14. But that's your boy, Asmongold. So before we get into this, we should cover how YouTube works as an uploader. Basically what happens is that you pour your heart and soul into a video and what determines if it gets seen or not isn't necessarily its quality as much as its ability to clickbait the fuck out of people, though quality does help, but when you first post it you get this big initial surge. These are from the people with good taste, aka my subscribers, and based on how many of them watched it and for how long they've watched it, if they commented, liked, disliked, etc., 
that will determine its spot in quote the algorithm which is the term that people use for how much YouTube promotes your video. If it doesn't hit the algorithm, this video doesn't get recommended at all. Even if people search for it, it'll rank very low in the results. If it hits it a little bit, it'll maybe be promoted on another similar video, such as another World of Warcraft video in this case. And if it takes that algorithm, bends it over, and helps it stretch to relieve that back pain because sex before marriage is a sin, then it gets recommended everywhere. That's when it went big dick, as the kids alarmingly say these days. Well, this video did just that, and while this may seem like a flat line to you, this is actually remarkably good, and because of it, it's one of my most popular videos because it's so consistent. But then we notice a little spike here on May 12th, because this is when everyone's favorite corporal decided he wanted to watch some real content and he reacted to it. So you'll see a bump in viewership here because he's consistent about giving credit and link the video to his stream after watching it. But even visually here, you'll notice an immediate decline. Um, I did actually take the time to average all of these out. And as you can just visually see here, we have a pretty significant decrease in viewership, presumably due to the fact that from this date, there are now two major copies of this video sharing the algorithm. And I think that's a pretty reasonable conclusion to make, considering that the dip started directly after the reaction was made and posted. On the flip side, we do have that positive that I mentioned earlier here. And as you can see on the day of the react, shortly after we do have some subscriptions. And this is where it gets kind of hard to track because as powerful as YouTube's analytics are, there's no way to track how many views I've gotten from these subscribers specifically. So, you know, did these people check out episodes two, three, and four? Will they watch this video? Who knows? And beyond that, there's just no way to track things such as like, okay, well, maybe one of these viewers from his stream linked my video on a Discord, which got linked by someone there to Reddit, which hit the front page or whatever. So, you know, analytics can tell a story, but don't fall for that trap. They can't tell the whole story. And beyond all of this, there's also an aspect of just working days, weeks, months into making, say, a 30 minute video and a reaction that takes 30 minutes to make, garnering like 10 times the viewership. I think you do have to consider the fact that the streamer also started as a bottom. No one launches their first stream to 10,000 people watching them. Much of that is a grind itself, and I do think that's something to consider, but no matter how you spin this, it's always gonna be something that'll just fundamentally rub people the wrong way, and it certainly has been the source of friction between editors and reactors. But there is more to the story than just numbers. As with anything related to the internet, we also have that beautiful, beautiful drama. This strain of live streamers you belong to, which profits by feeding off drama and riling up hordes of parasocially diseased teenagers. You are a liar, a fraud, and a parasite in human clothing. But if you want to prove me wrong on that, all you have to do is honor the word of your Discord. I mentioned earlier that this is quite the dramatic topic recently, and who oh boy, I tell you what, is that an understatement? Everything talked about so far has been in the context that the reactor reacts positively to the video. So what happens when they react negatively? An unfortunate thing that happens with these online influencers and their audiences, partly due to those awesome parasocial relationships we all love so much, is that a certain percentage of their viewers are very cult-like in their behavior, and an influencer <laughs> doing something as benign as disagreeing with something the editor said has the potential to proc their enrage timers. <sighs> How dare this peasant suggest something my lord disagrees with? Heretic, he must pay. <clears throat> Excuse me, that was incredibly disturbing. I have experienced this myself. And I've seen other people experience it. And personally, I don't care. Generally, if you just ignore them, they go away. I think that's good advice in general for anyone using social media. But it does have the tendency to get pretty ugly, 
which can cause a response from the editor, and then it becomes a back and forth situation between two communities. And while most of this is completely unintentional yes, from the streamer's sir. perspective, unfortunately there are those out there who are very well aware of this, and they will intentionally weaponize their audience to brigade a channel, and that can get really bad. Um, especially if it's a very large streamer versus a very small channel because you have that power dynamic of, in some cases, thousands of people just going absolutely in and going not just to the video in question, but every video on their channel, stalking their social media, and just spreading all manner of hate and vitriol. And I can definitely see how that can be overwhelming. In my opinion, if you're going to be posting videos on the internet, or streaming, or doing anything public for that matter, it's wise to have a thick skin. It's no secret that online anonymity gives people the courage to do and say whatever they want, and beyond the whole keyboard warrior thing, due to things such as herd mentality and de-individuation, is something that's easy to fall into. There is a very large dehumanizing aspect to social media that removes these barriers to treat others pretty cruelly, that would otherwise exist in real face-to-face -face interactions. And it's pretty naive and unrealistic to expect that you'll never ever have a single negative thing ever said about you. Um, but, you know, at the same time, someone who simply wants to make videos as wrong as someone may perceive it does not give them the right to pick up the pitchforks and just go way, way, way over the top. And it certainly has resulted in very avoidable drama and harassment. I think that is undeniably another negative aspect that comes from these React channels. It just has a lot of potential for drama. Many streamers do realize this though, and when they do disagree, they take great care to do it in a way that minimizes the chances of any sort of brigading that may occur from their more fervent, brainless audience. And that's good. And I think those people are the ones worth watching. So, those are the reacts, their history, the benefits and problems, but what about solutions? Well, with anything related to drama, usually what helps is just communication, whether that be a streamer asking for permission to post a react, or an editor letting it be known that they're fine with reacts, or not fine. Um, if they have a problem with how a streamer did something, they can ask them to take it down or to stop. I can't speak for everyone, obviously, but from what I've seen, streamers are pretty amiable to requests like that, and if you just ask them, they usually comply. But in regards to things like algorithms, it's a little tricky because no one really knows how they work exactly. That's kind of the point, or else people would just game it more so than they do already. But the way that I see it is if the issue stems from views, a possible solution would be to add the views to the original. Now obviously, these wouldn't generate any sort of ad revenue themselves, but if these views are calculated in whatever algorithm YouTube uses, it would still generate more views and revenue than the original uploader would have received had it not been reacted to. And at the same time, guaranteeing that the original copy is the one that has the most views, which I think that's something that most would agree is the way it should be. So in my case, for example here, my episode is currently sitting at 2.5 million, and Asmon, that fucker, is at 2.7 million, so after this change his would remain at 2.7, and mine would have 5.2, and he also sends me a few million dollars as a professional courtesy. This is also helpful due to the bandwagon effect. People generally conform to whatever is popular, so put yourself in this scenario. You're finishing your basement to make it look all nice for your new real doll. Are you going to click on a video tutorial with 400 views or 7 million? Now I know that there are some of you out there who will support the smaller channel, and that's great. But for the most part, people just think to themselves, well, how can 7 million be wrong? Even if it's inferior because you can't even see dislikes anymore because YouTube is so awesome. But my thinking here is that not only would the original receive more views for the algorithm, 
it would also make theirs more appealing to the general audience due to this bandwagon effect. And it would go a long way in reducing that friction in regards to viewership and generally just make the whole relationship more symbiotic. And beyond that, revenue sharing. This isn't really my suggestion. Many people have suggested this, but because it is their original creation, the editor should be able to share the revenue. And funny enough, YouTube already has most of this system in place. This is the copyright tab for any YouTube channel. And what this does is it lists those who have uploaded copies of your videos and how much of a copy it is. 100% is a direct rip and anything lower is usually a react. But look at the options here. Move to archive, request video removal, or message. As you can see, no revenue sharing. So I think that this would be another very simple change as the interface and detection is already in place. And this power is already given to music licensors who will either take all of your revenue or some of it. So I see absolutely zero reason why this shouldn't be a thing for the general public, especially considering how insanely popular Reacts are. I would say make it reasonable, maybe like 60-40 in favor of the editor or something. I don't know. Let me know what you think is fair. Um, I don't think you want to go too overboard, but at least something I think would do a lot to calm the very troubled waters between reactors and reactees. At the end of the day, aside from that, I don't think that there's really any logical reason for there to be drama, but considering that drama is one of the most effective ways of growing a channel, who in their right mind would deprive themselves and their audience of such awesome content that can never ever go and hasn't already gone sideways like 10,000 times already. But whatever the case may be, just remember that the most important thing is to like this video and to subscribe to my Patreon and to check out this video sponsor, Surfshark VPN, Commander Mad Season's favorite VPN on the Citadel. Thanks for watching the premiere of this series. Please let me know what you think of it. This is a very interesting subject, and I think only good can come from discussion. I will be doing more episodes about many more subjects, so if you liked it, keep an eye out for more, because there is more on the way. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everybody. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. Hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.